stop ignoring the water for a minute because it's gonna help us understand what's going to happen in the case of a base. We have our water and it has an ionization and it's equal, equilibrating. Basically what you have is that this can dissociate into H plus and OH minus. We've been ignoring water, but now let's think about it a little more explicitly because it's gonna come into play when we're talking about bases. Um, and it's always coming into play, we're just not really thinking about it. But we have to think about it a little more explicitly when we're thinking about our bases. What we have with water is it's also going to be ionizing to give you H plus plus OH minus. Whenever we have a reaction, remember we that this is equilibrium, we can write an equilibrium equation. So we could write an equilibrium equation for this. That would be our proton concentration times our hydroxide concentration over the concentration of water. If we wanted to rearrange this, what we could say is that KEQ times the concentration of our H2O is equal to the concentration of protons times the concentration of our hydroxide ions. Now, the, water is, the concentration of water is so, so crazy high. It's like 55.5 molar that we're just kind of kind of always assume that it's going to be 55.5 molar and therefore we can lump it in um and we can say that basically our keq times this um 55.5 molar equals h plus times our oh minus and then if you were to like go and measure this out what it turns out to be is that this value here which we'll define as kw now that Kw is going to be equal to 10 to the minus 14 is equal to our concentration of our protons times our concentration of our hydroxide ions. And we can take the negative log of these. What we're gonna get is that our 14 is equal to our pH plus our pOH. So basically we have this situation where we could think about it in terms of either like directly in terms of our concentrations or um, indirectly in terms of the um, like the pH and the pOH. But what this is telling us is that we have this constant relationship where we have a balance between the concentration of protons and the concentration of hydroxide ions. What this means is that if one of them increases, the other has to decrease. So if we see a change in our proton concentration, this is going to cause a decrease in our hydroxide concentration. Now, when we're measuring pH, we're talking about the proton concentration. But when we're, when we're adding a base, what we're adding is like if we're increasing our OH minus, well, what we're doing is we're kind of like indirectly, we're increasing, um, we're decreasing our proton concentration in order to compensate and keep this, um, keep this constant as a constant. So now let's go ahead and use that knowledge to solve a question about what happens if we were to dissolve a base. So in this case, our sodium acetate. So we need to use a couple of different relationships here. So one is that we, one we've just talked about that the pH plus the pOH is equal to 14. And, that, and the other is going to be that our pKa plus our pKb is going to equal to 14. Um, and so by using these relationships, although we don't know pKb directly, we can figure it out based on pKa of its conjugate acid. So remember that what we have is we have, in, we have our reaction, equilibrium, um, H plus, plus A minus. And what we're saying is that when we're talking about our pKa, we're talking about H plus over A minus over HA. When we're talking about our Kb, well, here what we're talking about is the reaction between A minus and our H2O to give us our um, HA plus OH minus. In this case, so that was our Ka for our Kb, what we're dealing with is that we have our HA over times OH minus over our A minus. And then remember that again, for these, we're taking the water as being that constant that's going to be accounted for. Um, and so when we do this, basically what we can see 
is that if we were to solve one of these equations for the other equation and then um, incorporate the water's equilibration into there, we get this equation where we have pKa plus pKb equals 14. And when we have this relationship, well, now we can go ahead and we can solve for our pKb. Well, we can solve for our Kb, which we can then use to solve for the pKb. So we know that our pKa, the pKa of the conjugate base, I mean, of the conjugate acid is going to be equal to our 4.8. So then we say plus the pKb is going to be equal to 14. And if we do this, we can figure out that the pKb is going to be equal to 9.2. So that's great. And now we can go ahead and we can um, basically set up the same tort of reaction um, th that we had before. Okay, so here we have something like this. And what's gonna happen is that when we add that base, it's going to react with the water. So you're going to lose from this and you're going to be gaining here. But we're not going to consider the water, remember? So we are just going to consider, we're just going to ignore that water. Now what's going to happen is if we went and we wrote our KB equation, we would have X times X over our minus X. So that would be our KB or um, our minus 1.150 minus X. Um, and so now what we can do is we can go ahead and we can use that relationship where we have our PKB is going to equal the negative log of our KB. So it's gonna equal the negative log of X squared over 0. 0.150 minus X. And we said that the PKB was going to be 9.2. So 9.2 equals this. Um, and if we go ahead and we go and plug that in and solve for that quadratic. So as always, it's gonna give me two answers. And in this case, one of them is negative. So I'm gonna ignore it and the other one X is 0 0.0038. Okay, so what is this X? Well, this X is going to be our concentration of our um, conjugate acid, and it's going to be our concentration of our OH. And if we know the concentration of our OH, well, now we can easily find the pOH. And if we know the pOH, well, then we can find the pH. So basically what we can say is that this is going to equal our OH minus, and now if we want to find the pOH, we just have to take um, the negative log of that. And what we're going to get is that this value is 2.42. Remember our relationship where that we have of the pH plus the pOH equals 14. And so the pH is equal to 14 minus our pOH. And well, we just found our pOH. So what we can do is pH is equal to 14 minus 2.42. And if we go ahead and we work that out, we can figure out that our pH is going to equal about 11.6. Does this make sense? We would expect it to be a high pH, right? Because we're adding a base. And indeed we have raised the pH and we have this pH of 11, about 11.6. So you can see that even though we weren't dealing with an acid, we can still calculate a pH by remembering our relationships that our pH plus our pOH equals 14 and that our pKa plus our pKb is equal to 14.